Part 1. Research Methods The best thing that you can do for yourself is to start with a question. Think about the things that you've been reading in your fields of study. What are people talking about? What are people really jazzed about going on? Uh, what do people determine to be problematic within your field right now? And then you need to consider, what do you know about that topic already? Because the things that you know, you can find support for. And then start listing your questions about that. Like, why is this important? Who's involved? Uh, what isn't being said about this topic? And other kinds of questions like that. Then you start examining what it is that you need to know. Like I said before, it's important that you problematize. Think about things that start with the who, what, where, when, why, and how words. So things like, what is the main issue? Who's involved? Where is this happening? Why is this problematic in its current form? When did this begin? When is it most problematic? Remember, your job, especially for this course, is not to solve the problem. Your job here is to examine an issue going on in your field and to tell other people about it. You're just presenting the problem. In order to find support for your argument, you need evidence. For an academic piece of writing, you must find academic articles to support what it is that you're going to be saying. Use the access that we have to the databases. JSTOR, ProQuest, EBSCO, they're fantastic places to start, but use the others. Here's a pro tip. All of the databases have specializations of some kind, and they all have different search ranges. Using all of them to try to find articles for your study will give you a broader range of articles. When you're searching, it's important that you vary the phrasing of your search terms. For example, if I was searching for Harry Potter, I wouldn't just say Harry Potter. I would search for things like wizardry, wizard, witchcraft, Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, Hogwarts, magic, and other things that are associated with Harry Potter. You might find that varying up your search terms will help you find more specific kinds of things that you want, and you'll be able to sort of weed out the pieces that aren't so helpful. The most important part, take your time. Research isn't meant to be fast or easy. You have to be patient, and it's best if you can spread out the work over several days or weeks. Remember that the articles that you're reading, the writers have taken months, maybe even years, to put these together. So you're not going to be able to just do this overnight. Take your time. Be aware. Not everything you find is going to work. One of the worst approaches to research writing is taking the first 15 or so articles that you find that match the search phrasing and then you just stop looking. They're not all going to work. You may find that you have to search through pages and pages and pages of research before you find the things that talk about the aspect of the problem that you're really interested in. Part 2. Critical Reading Examine your articles closely. Who is the author? What kind of credentials do they have? Why should we listen to this person? What support or evidence do these people seem to have for their argument? What is the topic or the issue? Who is the audience? Is there a clear bias present? Do the facts seem true or trustworthy? Examine chapter 5 in your textbook for more. Remember what we've talked about involving logical fallacies. Use logical reasoning to determine if the things on the writing really seem to match up or are well-reasoned. Examine what isn't being said. It's one of the most important research questions that you can ask, because your writing should bring something new to a discussion. Research writing is not valuable at all if you're just paring back everything that you already know. You should try to bring something new and unique to this conversation. All right. So now it's time for you to go ahead and get started.